If you saw my last video, you know I finally upgraded my M1 MacBook Air that I've had for about five years now to the new M4 Pro MacBook Pro. And the performance boost going from M1 Air to M4 Pro is absolutely insane. But one of the most exciting upgrades that doesn't get talked about enough is Thunderbolt 5. It's built into the M4 Pro and unlocks some serious, next level options when it comes to connectivity. But here's the thing, if you actually wanna take advantage of those Thunderbolt 5 ports, you're gonna need the right gear. And that's where this comes in, the Fusion Dock Pro 3 from Ivanki. It's one of the first real Thunderbolt 5 docks you can actually buy right now, and it completely transformed my entire setup. Here's the thing, if you want to run a next level setup, you know, 4K monitors at like 120 hertz, or hooking up some super fast external storage, most standard USB-C docks just are not gonna cut it at all. They just don't have the bandwidth. And that's where Thunderbolt 5 comes in. So let's go ahead and jump to my top-down camera and I'm gonna show you everything that this dock has to offer. All right, and here we are with the Fusion Dock Pro 3. I'll walk you around the box a little bit and then I will unbox it and actually go through the device to show you everything that it can do. So as you can see here, just some marketing material, Thunderbolt 5 certified, of course, very important. Triple monitor setup, uh, 120 gigabits per second, data transfer rate, and you can run up to an 8K 60 hertz monitor, which I don't have an 8K monitor, but I definitely have a 4K 144 hertz monitor, which should run with this no problem. Around the sides, we just have a little bit of artwork, but along the back here is where we have kind of a full breakdown of everything that this dock has to offer but we're gonna open this up and actually take a look at it physically. So we're not just gonna rely on the artwork here. So let's flip it back over and crack this thing open. All right, here we go. Now we've got the manual right here, which is actually pretty helpful if you're trying to figure out exactly what everything is capable of, especially the different data transfer rates and all of that for the different plugs. You might wanna take a look at this manual, but I'll set it to the side for now. We've also got the dock itself here, which is wrapped in plastic to keep it pristine. We'll move that to the side pull out this piece of cardboard, and underneath that, we're gonna find a lot of the cables and everything. So we'll rip that out, set that to the side. Now here, we have a Thunderbolt 5 cable. So I've got a couple or a few Thunderbolt 4 cables lying around. This is my first Thunderbolt 5 cable though. So this should have much faster data transfer speeds than your typical Thunderbolt 4, but we'll put that to the side for now. Then we have, uh, couple different pieces of the power cable. So you have the power cable as well as the power brick and then the barrel connector that will plug into the actual device. So this is gonna be probably just sitting behind your desk. This seems pretty standard and we'll just plug into the wall. So we'll set that aside, move this box out of the way and now let's actually take a look at the dock. Now I've actually done a few Thunderbolt dock reviews, mostly Thunderbolt 4 up to this point. So if you want to check out the playlist of all the different docks that I've reviewed, I'll link that at the end of this video and down in the description box. But of course I'll be adding this one to that playlist. So again, you can just watch all of those and really kind of figure out which dock works, works best for you. But let's remove this from the plastic in the meantime. And here we go. We've got this uh, nice cool aluminum finish. It kind of is a I don't know, brushed aluminum or something like that. You've got some minimal branding, just Ivanki right here at the top. And let's walk around the device. So on the sides, you're gonna have kind of this uh, ridged texture here. I think that's more just for design purposes, but it also makes it a little bit easier to grip when you're grabbing onto this. Although I don't imagine you'll be moving this around very much. It's probably just gonna sit tucked away on your desk, but you do have that kind of grippy texture on the side here. On the other side, you have a Kensington lock uh, ability here so you can strap this down to your desk if you need to. I've never used a Kensington lock personally, but maybe for professional setups in an office or something like that, you might want to use it, but you have that there. Underneath, just a few rubber feet to keep it from sliding around on your desk. Nothing crazy there. I imagine if you wanted to take this apart, the screws are probably underneath these feet, but I don't see why you would want to do that, but uh, you know, there you go. But really where all the magic is gonna be is gonna be on the front and the back of this device. So let's start on the front here and walk through all of the different ports and options that you have available to you. Oh, but actually before we get to that part, I do wanna say if you're enjoying this video, if it's helping you out at all, if you could please consider subscribing to the channel. Right now I'm making a big push to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I don't know if you can tell right over here of my shoulder, but we're currently at about 3,200 subscribers. So I think it's possible, but it's definitely gonna be a long shot. So if you wanna help make a nerd's dreams come true, consider subscribing. All right, 
Back to the video. First up, starting at the very top, you'll notice you have some ventilation going on here. You have that both, I believe, on the front and the back to allow to, to cool this down a bit. Of course, you're gonna be running a lot of high-speed devices through this, so you're definitely gonna need that cooling. Over on the left side of the device, though, you have your power switch just to turn this on or off. There's also two LED lights right here. The one on the left is the Thunderbolt 5 link indicator. So that's gonna light up when you have a Thunderbolt device connected to it, and I believe it's gonna light up in blue. Next to that, you have a power indicator. That's just gonna light up green whenever you have power going to the device. Next to that is gonna be the first of your Thunderbolt ports here. This is the one that will plug into your computer. Now, I know some people prefer to have this coming out the back of the device. I actually like to have it coming out of the front because I use my laptop kind of opened up in front of and below my monitor. So to have the cable coming from the front, it's just really easy to plug my laptop into that. But if you're the kind of person who would prefer it coming out of the back because maybe you leave your laptop in a, in a dock or on a stand or something like that, then just something to be aware of. Now, one really cool thing about this is that it puts out 140 watts of power, which is absolutely insane. That's more than any other dock that I've seen so far. So this will absolutely charge your laptop incredibly fast. Next up, we have another Thunderbolt dock here. So you can use this to connect any Thunderbolt or USB-C accessories. This also charges at up to 60 watts. So a lot of times the, uh, the port that I'll use at the front here I'll just use to charge up any devices that need quick charging or anything like that. But if you have maybe a Thunderbolt uh, SSD enclosure, I actually have a couple of those myself, but you'll be able to kind of plug that in and remove it pretty easily right here up front. Then next to that, we have a USB type A port here. This is going to put out 10 gigabits per second. Over on the right hand side, we have something that I personally love to include on these kinds of docks, and that is an SD card slot. So for me, obviously I make these videos and I'm constantly loading footage onto my computer from an SD card. So it's really nice to just have a port right up front. One thing that I might like to see on a future version of this is also a micro SD card slot. I have other Thunderbolt docks that include both full-size SD card and micro SD card. It's not the end of the world. I've got a ton of adapters lying around, but it would just be cool to see. Then finally on the far right, we have our combo headphone slash headset jack right here. So if you had a wired headset that you wanted to plug into this or headphones. I know I use uh, some headphones for editing these videos and it's nice to be able to just plug that right into the dock up front. But that's everything you get up front. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and spin this around to the back so that way you can see where you're going to be plugging in most of the peripherals that you hook up to this. All right, and so flipping this around now, this might look a little odd to some of you because one thing you'll notice here is that there are no HDMI or DisplayPort cable connectors back here. And that might be a little odd, but you do have plenty of connectivity here and you can still hook up multiple monitors through the Thunderbolt ports. But again, let's start all the way over to the left here. We have a USB type A port which is for up to five gigabits per second. This is something that you'll use to connect maybe some wireless peripherals like your mouse or keyboard or something like that. You can hook it right up into here. Then we have two more USB type A ports that are going to run at 10 gigabits per second. So this will power maybe some faster uh, external hard drives, or if you have maybe a, an interface, like an audio interface or something like that, you should be able to plug this right into here and should work with no problem. Then we've got your old RJ45 port. This is your ethernet port, which can run up to 2.5 gigabits. Personally, at my house, I don't even have a gigabit connection here. We have terrible internet, it's really upsetting, but this is a cool way to future-proof yourself in case you do end up upgrading your internet down the line. This should work with no problem for super fast speeds. Either way, it's gonna be better than just connecting over the Wi-Fi signal at your house. So I definitely recommend hardwiring in if you can. I actually have a full on mesh network that I've set up at my house, which makes the internet so much better in some of the rooms that are further away from the router. If you wanna see a video about how to set up a mesh network like that, let me know in the comments. I haven't made one so far, but it might be something that, that interests you. Next to that, we've got two more Thunderbolt ports here. Now these can be used for a number of devices, of course, storage or just high speed uh, devices that require a lot of, of data throughput. Or of course, you can use these to run your monitors. Now, a lot of monitors nowadays have USB-C connections on them, so you can plug USB-C right into them, or you can get a Thunderbolt to DisplayPort cable or adapter which will run monitors up to 4K at 144 Hertz or even 8K at 60 Hertz. But either way, you'll wanna make sure you're connecting your monitors to either or both of these ports right here. Then finally, all the way to the right, we have our barrel connector here. This is 
for the power to go to the wall. And so pretty simple, you'll just wanna make sure that you have power coming to this before you connect it to anything else. And then of course, you also have the vents along the back here to help with cooling. But that's everything you get here, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I'm so excited to get this connected. Let's go ahead and jump back to the other camera and wrap this thing up. So yeah, this Thunderbolt 5 dock kind of completes the whole upgrade for me. The M4 Pro is already a beast on its own, but pairing it with a Thunderbolt 5 dock like this, now I've got one cable that powers my entire setup. 4K external displays or even 8K, super fast SSDs, uh, SD card, full speed charging, all of it works just the second that I plug it into this dock. If you've already upgraded to an M4 MacBook Pro or if you're thinking about it, this is the kind of gear that really lets you take full advantage of those Thunderbolt 5 ports. Look, it's not cheap, but it is absolutely rock solid. And right now there just aren't a lot of docks out there like it. If you wanna know why I finally made the jump from my M1 Air to the M4 Pro, I'll link that video right over here somewhere. And if you wanna see how this stacks up to some of the other Thunderbolt docks I've tested out, I'll link to that playlist as well. Thanks so much for hanging out today. If this video helped you out, drop a like on it and maybe consider subscribing for more content like this. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time in the spare tech room. Be good.